NASA is searching for energy on other planets. China is building their own fusion reactor, but check it out. I've made my own reactor. Maximum power. Wow. Nah guys, just kidding. This is not a reactor, but I've seen this project on the internet, so I had to make one myself as well. I had to. I must have my own plasma toroid generator. It looks so cool, especially there. We have seen plasma on this channel so many times. With my plasma speaker generator and with the plasma tubes with different colors from a previous video, but never a toroid shape of plasma. This is so interesting. So how is the plasma confined in the shape of a ring or a toroid? How is that possible? We will see just that in today's episode, where I build the required circuit, make the PCB and create my own plasma toroid inside of a glass ball. Check all the links below and consider supporting my work on Patreon. That being said, let's get started. What's up my friends, welcome back. Inside this glass bowl I have xenon gas. The plasma toroid phenomenon is a great example of inductively coupled plasma, or ICP. By the way, this project has no use other than looking cool. It's just an illustration of electromagnetic loss, and I wanted to do it. So if you also want such a cool experiment, you can get the PCB files from below and order it at PCBWay.com. This project has two PCBs. Actually, three if you also count these small leg PCBs. One for the oscillating driver and another PCB to support the main coil. So download them from below and go to PCBWay.com and click the code now button. You add the size, the amount of PCBs and the color. I like the black color for this project. You add it to cart and on the next page upload the Gerber files and make the order and just like that, in a few days I receive my beautiful design. As you can see I have the two PCBs. On the main one we have to make the oscillator circuit, which is quite simple. A transistor, some coils and capacitors, and a few diodes and resistors. My project is based on this document that I found online, by Tate McAlooney and Jeff Fagin. You have all the theory, the optimization, an example circuit, graphs and observations. So based on this example, with minor changes, I've made my circuit and then passed to PCB. I have the main input, a potentiometer for control, the MOSFET and the coil and capacitors for oscillations. And this is a class E oscillator. So together with the PCB you also need all these components. The MOSFET, the potentiometer, resistors and diodes, capacitors and so on. You have the full part list on the tutorial page below. And by the way I bought the Xenon glass from AliExpress. And it costs quite a lot, like 80 bucks. So it would be nice to have my own vacuum system and create my own gas bottles, but anyway. I've selected a potentiometer with a switch, so it could also act as an on and off interrupter. The components will get quite hot. That's why I've made the PCB design with a lot of heat dissipating vias. Also the MOSFET will get even hotter. So below we will add a heat dissipator like this one, that I've also bought from AliExpress. I've measured the hole distance and placed those holes on my PCB design. I also want to add a cooling fan just to make sure that the MOSFET won't get too hot. The PCB has to piece here for supplying that fan. So let's assemble it. I first add the potentiometer and the main input jack. I then add all the true hole resistors. Check the schematic for each value. Then I add the capacitors, and the same, the values are on the schematic and make sure that we are using 18-12 size capacitors. Then I add the coil, and the MOSFET goes on the bottom side. So we have to bend the legs like this, and then solder it like this, with the metal pad facing downwards. Like that we can later add the heat dissipator, touching the MOSFET. Now the oscillator is ready. 
this will get connected to the second PCB which will have yet another coil. If you check the schematic you can see that the coil on points A and B is in parallel with the capacitors forming an LC circuit that will resonate. And the potentiometer is turned to increase the voltage at the MOSFET gate until the gate voltage is equal to the MOSFET threshold voltage and start discharging the tank capacitors through the plasma driver coil. So let's make the final assembly. Using screws and separators, we connect together the main PCB with the heat dissipator and the cooling fan. I've used these plastic separators to add some insulation. On top I add the coil PCB, which also has a small LED that will glow when the circuit is running, so don't touch the circuit if this LED is turned on, or it might zap you. So take the coil PCB and using some enameled copper wire, we make yet another coil. And to support this coil I've made some PCB legs. And to spare some space and only use a few PCBs, I've panelized the design so each PCB will have 4 legs. You can simply snap each leg with your fingers. And we need 5 legs, and each one has 5 holes. So place the legs on the second PCB and use some solder to fix them in place. Take the enamel wire and make 5 loops. And you should end up with something like this, a coil with 5 loops and 2 wires going downwards. Now place the second PCB on top of the driver PCB with some screws and connect the wires from the big coil to the driver controller and the oscillator is ready. Place the xenon gas ball on top. We need a main supply of 24 volts, which could be just a brick adapter with enough current. Connect the supply to the main DC input and flip the potentiometer switch. Ok guys, let's check it out. It's not my first try, I've already done it and it looks amazing. I start it up and you already can see the glow inside because the air is ionized and you can change the position of resonance with this potentiometer. But sometimes you also have to just slightly touch it and there you have it. We have a ring and I've seen that sometimes it starts moving around. But if you increase the potentiometer enough, you can get it's steady and look at that. It really looks like an arc reactor from Tony Stark. Look at that! It looks so amazing. Let's just change the angle. Ui, look at that! It started to make sounds. Look at that. It's pulsating. Oh, I just get, got zapped. Don't touch the coils. You have it, increase it. Can you hear the sound? We just play the microphone. My god. This is so cool to see. So guys, I have my beautiful plasma toroid held in mid-air like a fusion reactor. It's so cool to watch. Looks like something from Tony Stark. Let me just show it to you just one more time. I really think this is awesome. I also like, like the green color and we have seen this color when, when I show you the plasma generated in the bulbs, in the glass tubes and when we had Xenon, this was the color. You just touch it, there you have it. By the way, it consumes less power when the, it's not in the middle of the resonance fre resonating frequency and you have this ring. And when you increase it, I can see how the fan is starting to ramp up and also the bulb is getting quite hot. Actually after, after 2 or 3 minutes you can't even touch it. I mean you can touch it but just for a few seconds. Look at that. It's so awesome. I wonder if I could push it just below the level of the coils. Okay, this is just a simple test. I have a, a magnet here. Let me just start it on and create a ring and see what happens when I get close with the magnet. It looks like it bends just a little bit towards the magnet. Let me just use more magnets. Yeah, it moves. Yeah, I can move the ring. Can you see it? I can like confine it, maybe using multiple magnets. Yep. 
Just as in a reactor, they confine the plasma using magnetic fields, right? Or am I wrong? You want to see something even crazier? I was making tests with some other gases. This is Krypton. So as you can see, look, it creates some sort of helix inside. Not sure if you can see it on the camera. Disappear there. Ui! Look at that. Can you see it? It has the shape of a helix. The reason for the torrid shape is that xenon can easily produce filamentary discharges at low pressure, while the induced eddy current is circular in nature. So once this loop forms, the gas-like plasma ring exhibits thermal characteristics, related to the convection of warmer and less dense gas rising, while the cooler and more dense gas sinks. The created plasma torus, though not stationary due to thermal effects, is effectively a nucleation region where the additional energy of the external magnetic field sustains the ionization. You have everything that you need to replicate this project below. There are so many attempts online already that I couldn't find the original creator. I first thought it was the Back Mac Size Channel, or the Magic Plasma Creator, or other accounts that I've seen on YouTube, but because I don't know for sure, I will tag all the related channels below, in case that you want to thank them. And once again thanks to Tate McAlooney and Jeff Feigina for providing the useful document. You have all my projects for free, so consider supporting me on Patreon. Or maybe give a like for the algorithm or comment below. Thanks again and see you later guys. Hey guys, so as you all know making these kind of videos is not that easy for me, it requires a lot of time, a lot of machinery and also oscilloscopes, power supplies and so on, and also a lot of modules. And thanks to your support on Patreon, is it a lot easier for me to buy those modules. So thank you very much to all my patrons and also to you guys for commenting below, for giving likes to my videos and also sharing my videos to help spread out this information. So thank you very much.